Hello everyone, eleven standard people. So today we would be going through the first chapter of our supplementary book that is a snapshot. Okay, that is a supplementary reading section, another book. Now we will be starting with the first chapter that is the summer of a beautiful white horse written by William. It's mandatory to remember the name of the chapter and the name of the author. It's a mandatory thing. So as you can see the name that is the summer of a beautiful white horse. So there would be a, a horse in the story and that to a white horse that would be adding up the charm. So after one minute we would be starting the chapter okay it's a quite a lengthy chapter it would be a lengthy chapter because it's a supplementary reading okay so obviously it would be a lengthy chapter Right, so let's start it. One day back there in the good old days when I was nine and the world was full of every imaginable kind of magnificence and life was still a delightful and mysterious dream. My cousin Murad was considered crazy by everybody who knew him except me. Come to my house at four in the morning and woke me up to the tapping on the window of my room. So we have two people here, first is our author and his cousin Murat. So author was sleeping, author was uh, sleeping because here it is said that uh, like someone would be coming at our author's house at 4 in the morning. So definitely at that time he would be sleeping and I think during that time his cousin Murat would come he might have told him actually he came at four in the morning okay and murad woke him up okay he might be knocking on the window and that's how our author came to know um he said um i jumped out of bed and looked out of the window yes someone is knocking the window so he looked out at it so i refers to our author i couldn't believe what i saw it wasn't morning yet but it was summer and with daybreak not many minutes around the corner of the world it was light enough for me to know that i wasn't dreaming so our author could not believe what he just saw so actually during that time that is 4 a.m in the morning his cousin murad had brought something with him so when author woke up and when he saw that he was not able to believe it okay he was not he didn't believe it wasn't morning yet yes we saw that it wasn't morning yet but it was summer and with daybreak not many minutes around the corner of the world it was light enough for me to know I wasn't dreaming, yes. My cousin Murad was sitting on a beautiful white horse. I stuck my head out of the window and rubbed my eyes. Yes, he said in Armenia, it's a horse, you are not dreaming, make it quick if you want to write. Now, let me tell you, this is a story where Armenian family is, is present here in this chapter so these two boys they belong to Armenian family okay which family Armenian so Murad had bought the beautiful white horse at the first glance our author was not able to believe his eyes okay but finally 
he came to know that he wasn't dreaming and his cousin had really bought had really brought okay not bought he had really brought a beautiful white horse and his cousin even insisted the author to come and have a ride on the horse I knew my cousin Murad enjoyed being alive more than anybody else who had ever fallen into the world by mistake but this was more than even I could believe okay so this is a kind of a joke okay our author is saying about his cousin Murad in the first place my earliest memories had been memories of horses and my first longing had been longing to, longings to ride yes he had that urge you know to ride a horse so that urge gonna be fulfilled today this was the wonderful part in the second place we were poor this was the part that wouldn't permit me to believe what i saw now this thing we have to consider that as i told you murad had brought the horse now this family is a poor family so our author might be really thinking like from where did he get the money did he buy the horse had he bought it i don't think so he might uh, bought the horse okay he might have got from his friend or from someone else or if we think from the opposite side of the spectrum he might have stolen the horse so all these kind of thoughts would definitely come in our author's mind okay those thoughts would come because i don't think uh, murad would have enough money to buy that beautiful white horse let us see what happens in the chapter we were poor we had no money our whole tribe was poverty striken every branch of the a Galorian family was living in the most amazing and comical poverty in the world. Okay, so you see that sort of a family, it's an Armenian tribe. Okay, as I told you, they are from Armenian family, so they belong to this tribe and they didn't have money. They are very poor. So definitely to buy that horse it costs a serious amount of money. Let's see what happens in the chapter. Nobody could understand where we ever got money enough to keep us with food in our bellies, not even the old men of the family. Most important of all, though we were famous for our honesty. We had been famous for our honesty for something like 11 centuries, even when we had been the wealthiest family in what we like to think was the world. We were proud first honest next and after that we believed in right and wrong none of us would take advantage of anybody in the world let alone still so you see these are the qualities of the family that they have so the quality that is printed concerning this family these are all a1 grade qualities okay i mean they are very nice family so only question that is hurting our author is about the horse from where did he get the horse that is what he wants to know so consequently even thought i could see the horse so magnificent even though i could smell it so lovely even though i could hear it breathing so exciting i couldn't believe the horse had anything to do with my cousin murad or with me or with any of the other members of our family asleep or awake because i knew my cousin murad couldn't have bought the horse and if he couldn't have bought it he must have stolen it and i refuse to believe he had stolen it you see again the same kind of things are going in our author's mind he really wants to know that from where did the murad had got this horse because considering the qualities of the family one thing is for sure that the murad cannot steal the horse so in short he is quite curious to know where did he get that horse from 
ओके आई स्टेड फर्स्ट एट माई कजिन एंड देन एट द होर्स देर वॉज अ फायर स्टिलनेस एंड ह्यूमन इन ईच ऑफ दैम विच ऑन द वन हैंड डिलाइटेड मी एंड ऑन द अदर फाइट एंड मी मोर एट आई सेट वेट डिट यू स्टील दिस ओ येस नाउ एज अ कजिन यू कैन डिरेक्टली टॉक स्ट्रेट टू द पॉइंट करेक्ट नो प्रॉब्लम यू कैन सो दैट्स हाउ a conversation can be with another family members correct like you can directly ask that's what he is asking where did you steal this horse leap out of the window he said if you want to write so you see now still our author is at the window and he is he was first staring at the murad his cousin and then he was even looking at the horse so murad just told him like if you want to write just come down ओके सो दैट ही कैन हैव राइड ऑन द होर्स अगर टू राइड द होर्स एनी पर्सन शूड नो हॉर्स राइडिंग ओके इट्स अ मैंडेटरी थिंग अदरवाइज इट वॉन्ट बी इजी टू राइड द होर्स हॉर्स वुड रिफ्यूज टू रन और इवन ही वुड रिफ्यूज टू वॉक ओके सो दैट्स वॉट मुरैट टो लीप आउट ऑफ द विंडो ही सेड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू राइड इट वॉज ट्रू दैन ही हेट स्टोल ऑन द होर्स देर वॉज नो क्वेश्चन अबाउट इट He had come to invite me to ride or not, as I chose. Well, it seemed to me stealing a horse for a ride was not the same thing as stealing someone else, such as money. Okay, so you know this is like you are asking your friend. Let's say your friend he has an iPhone eleven Pro, okay, and you are asking your friend like, can you help me with that phone for a single night and on the next day? you are promising him to return it it is something like that okay or if we go one step ahead like if someone steals the phone and returns it back the next day okay are you able to imagine all these things are here okay he is thinking all those kind of things okay well it seems to me stealing a horse for a ride was not the same thing as stealing something else such as money for all i knew maybe it wasn't stealing at all if you are crazy about horses the way my cousin murad and i were it wasn't stealing it wouldn't become stealing until we offered to sell the horse which of course i knew we would never do hmm. so our author is trying to make up his mind using all these thoughts that he is thinking so he is thinking that it wouldn't be a stolen horse until and unless we sell the horse and i don't think these two people okay they would be selling the horse because at the first glance these two people they really love horse riding okay they just really love it so i don't think they would be selling the horse okay so in short william is making up his mind to sit on the horse and enjoy horse riding okay let's move for further let me put on some clothes i said yes of course you cannot go naked all right he said but hurry i leaped into my clothes i jumped down to the yard from the window and leaped up on to the horse behind my cousin murad oh, definitely yes he put on his clothes and he went down That year we lived at the edge of the town on Walnut Avenue. Behind our house was the country, wine yards, orchards, irrigation ditches, and the country roads. In less than three minutes we were on Olive Avenue, and then the horse began to trot. The air was new and lovely to breathe. The feel of the horse running was wonderful. My cousin Murad, who was considered one of the craziest members of our family, began to sing. I mean. he began to roar so yes definitely now those two people they are sitting on the horse our author is sitting at the back okay and murad is enjoying the horse riding not just horse riding they passed several orchards irrigation ditches several avenues even they crossed as it is clearly mentioned the names of the avenues and apart from that he was even singing actually he might not be singing he was roaring actually in short they are very happy they were breathing the fresh air they were on the sky okay these two people 
Every family has a crazy stake in it somewhere, and my cousin Murad was considered the natural descendant of a crazy streak in our tribe. Crazy streak means he would be doing crazy things all the time. Like you see, this time he got the horse, and that to a beautiful white horse. Okay, so he had descended all those qualities into him. Okay, that's a kind of a heredity, okay? It's a kind of a heredity. Before him was our uncle Khosra, an enormous man with a powerful head of a black hair and the largest mustache in the San Chukwin Valley. Mm, yes. So it refers to a place, okay? A man so furious in temper, so irritable, so impatient that he stopped anyone from taking by roaring. It is no harm, pay no attention to. Now you see, this apart from this cousin Murad, before that, they had this uncle Khosra, okay, now he was a really an enormous man and he had a big mustache as it is clearly printed and in the valley which is Saint Joaquin. A man so furious in temper, so furious means uh, he might be having a short temper, so he might be getting angry for simple things, okay, so as a result he would be roaring, that is what it is described here. So apart from it, our author has printed one more statement like don't pay any attention to him, okay? Don't pay any attention to him because he might say useless things which are literally useless. Now let us move on. That was all. No matter what anybody happened to be talking about. Once it was his own son Arak running eight blocks to the barber shop where his father was having his mustache trimmed to tell him their house was on fire. Okay, so there is this one person who is in the barber shop, might be trimming his beard. So at that time, his son had came and told him that our house is on fire. So definitely now, you can think if it happens personally with anyone else, how would that person react, correct? Now let us see. So this man Khosra sat up in the chair and rode. It is no harm, pay no attention to it. The barber said, but the boy says your house is on fire. So Khosra rode, enough, it is no harm, I said. Okay, so now this person Khosra, as, as I explained you moments ago, the author has written one statement that it is no harm, pay no attention to it. So here it, it literally after reading this paragraph you would come to know that this is the statement that he uses quite frequently that he uses quite frequently like it is no harm now as his son or a boy whoever had came at the barber shop when he was trimming his beard so that person told him that your house is on fire so again he spoke the same statement like no problem, take no harm, nothing will happen, take it easy, all those kind of statements. Even the barber told him, like, you know what, what did that boy say? He told you that your house is at fire. So again, uh, the barber at, at the first glance, he thought that he didn't understand what the boy had spoke, but he was aware what he was speaking so even he replied the same thing to the barber okay like take no harm okay now let us see again my cousin Murad was considered the natural descendant of this man although Murad's father was Zora who was a practical and nothing else that's how it was in our tribe okay so you know different kind of people having different mentalities doing crazy things that's a history of a family man in any family these kind of things are there okay these kind of different people okay now let us move further a man could be the father of his son's flesh but that did not mean that he was also the father of his spirit the distribution of various kinds of spirit of our tribe had been from the beginning capricious and vagrant okay we rode and my cousin Murad sang 
okay now let us come back to horse riding enough description of different people in the family now again we are at the horse riding we rode and my cousin murad sang for all anybody knew we were still in the old country where at least according to some of our neighbors we belong we let the horse run as long as it felt like running so they are really enjoying the horse riding now we are the they are at the countryside the countryside means they are at the village okay that is how uh, it's a way people use in western society like i mean i'm at the countryside so countryside means it's a village okay it's not the city okay so i think if you are at the countryside so everybody would be knowing where you are what you are doing okay they would be knowing everything okay so now they are letting the horse run as long it felt like running which means they are really enjoying the horse riding at last my cousin murad said get down i want to ride alone okay so that is what now our author is demanding like he wants to ride the horse alone he wants to ride the horse alone okay now let us move further will you let me ride alone i asked that is up to the horse my cousin said get down the horse will let me ride i said we shall see he said don't forget that i have a way with the horse so in short he is saying that you would be having a problem riding this horse the horse will let me ride i said okay we shall see he said don't forget that i have a way with the horse it means you can indirectly understand what a horse wants to convey or something like that that is what it is written here well i said any way you have with the horse i have also for the sake of your safety he said let us hope so. get done all right i said but remember you have got to let me try to ride alone it means our author he really wants to try the horse riding alone all right i said but remember you have got to let me try to ride alone yes as we understood i got down and my cousin murad kicked his heels into the horse and shouted wazir run the horse stood on its hind legs snorted and burst into a fury of speed that was the loveliest thing i had ever seen my cousin murad raced the horse across a field of dry grass to an irrigation ditch crossed the ditch on the horse and 5 minutes later returned dripping wet so you can see that the horse is running at its maximum speed author was on it so there was a irrigation ditch nearby where he was riding the horse and he fell in the irrigation ditch as a result he has wet his clothes that's the reason it is written here you see and 5 minutes later he returned that is our author returned dripping wet means he had fallen in the irrigation ditch the sun was coming up now it's my turn to ride i said my cousin murad got off the horse oh, okay le- let me just see okay so first our author was uh, requesting murad to ride the horse okay all right all right let me make you understand now here as author is requesting murad to ride the horse alone so he had gotten down from the horse so it means murad was alone and after that the murad was riding the horse okay still our author didn't get the chance to ride the horse alone so murad was riding the horse at the full speed he crossed and the irrigation ditches were there in the way so murad had fallen down who had fallen down murad remember not the author author still he didn't get the chance to ride the horse alone okay you have to understand and pay the concentration okay you have to read each and every statement properly and try to understand the meaning 
still now our author didn't get the chance to write the whole okay so after five minutes of murad riding back towards the author he was wet and now i think our author would be getting the chance to write the horse okay so you see five minutes later he returned dripping wet means who returned murad okay the sun was coming up now it's my turn to write i said my cousin murad got off the horse yes right he said so finally now our author is getting the chance to write the horse okay pay attention now is my turn to write i said my cousin murad got off the horse right he said yes i leaped to the back of the horse and for a moment knew the most awful fear imaginable the horse did not move yes if you did not have a or if you do not have a way with the horse then definitely is is trouble even moving the horse okay you won't even walk okay kick into his muscles my cousin murad said what are you waiting for we have got to take him back before everybody in the world is up and about it means he might have gotten this horse from anyone else or might be from the shelter of the horse that is a stable okay i kicked into the muscle of the horse once again it reared and snorted then it began to run i didn't know what to do instead of running across the field to the irrigation ditch the horse ran down the road to the vineyard of dickram halibian where it began to leap over vines the horse leaped over seven vines before i fell then it continued running yes if you have a trouble riding the horse then these things will happen so instead of going where the irrigation ditches were there he went to a wine yard and not just he was running he was even jumping as it is clearly mentioned seven times he had jumped okay as you can see clearly and after jumping seven times the author might had fallen down the author had fallen down however the horse was not stopping he continued running okay so now it would be even difficult to catch the horse okay i am not worried about you he shouted we have got to get that horse you go this way and i'll go this way if you come up if you come upon him be kindly i'll be near so now those two people cousin and our author they are trying to get the horse back so first they have to search the horse okay just pay attention very interesting okay and so now they are in search of their horse i continued down the road and my cousin murad went across the field towards the irrigation ditch yes it took him half an hour to find the horse and bring him back so finally they got the horse back and the time that they had taken to get that horse back was 30 minutes half an hour all right he said jump on the world the whole world is awake now what will we do i said well he said we'll either take him back or hide him until tomorrow morning he didn't sound worried and i knew he had hide him and not take him back not for a while at any rate so it means definitely he had taken this horse from somewhere i think literally from the stable he might have taken the horse okay so they are planning to hide the horse okay now let us see what they are doing where will we hide him i said i know a place he said okay how long ago did you steal this horse i said okay so he's asking the question directly like when did you steal this horse okay at any rate okay so it suddenly dawned on to me that he had been taking this early morning rides for some time and had come for me this morning only because he knew how much i longed to ride it means murad was really aware that his cousin really wanted to ride the horse okay but where did that horse come from it is still a question okay 
Who said anything about stealing a horse? He said. And I guess we shall continue in upcoming session.